All right, this is a video on rational expressions, and uh, we'll start off with an introduction and then do a few solved examples, All right? So definition of what simplest form is is probably a, a theme, a common theme for, for the rest of this video. We'll be looking at trying to put expressions into simplest form. And uh, an expression, a rational expression, is in simplest form if there is no further factoring and or canceling that can happen, okay? So we've factored as much as we can, and then we've canceled out as many terms as we can. In other words, the numerator and denominator have no common factors that could be canceled out. So let's look at a couple examples of that before we do our, before we actually go on and, and solve some examples. Um, f of x equals x plus one over x minus one. It's a common algebraic mistake to think you can just cancel the x's. You cannot do that. Um, and so there's no, there are no, uh, common factors between the top and the bottom, uh, the numerator and denominator. So this, this one is in simplest form. Um, in contrast, g of x equals x over x squared is not yet in simplest form because, as I'm sure you know, x squared is x times x. And then 1x up top and 1x down below can cancel. And then we can rewrite this as g of x equals 1 over x. So that would be our simplest form for that one right there. Sometimes you need to do a little bit more factoring. And so for h of x, that would factor into x plus 2, x plus 1 up top, and then an x plus 3 down below. So that is in simplest form. There's no, there's no canceling that can happen. Um, but if we had to do some factoring, sometimes we do have to, we do, are able to do some canceling. And then for i of x, I think you can see that our simplest form would be x minus 3 over x minus 1. And then it's, then it's fully simplified right there. Okay. When you do your canceling, you need to remember what terms you lost. Okay. So for example, for i of x right here, which we ended up with x minus 3 over x minus 1, I hope you can see that x is not allowed to be 1. 1 is not part of the domain of this function, um, because if it were, then we would be dividing by 0. x is also not allowed to be 2, because we, or excuse me, negative 2. Because if x were negative 2 in that cancel term, we would also have a 0 denominator in our original function. And even though we've lost that term for our final simplified form, we do need to keep track of that and remember um, that x is not allowed to be negative 2 in this situation. So let's do a quick example. Um, we have x squared plus 7x plus 10, and then x squared minus 3x minus 10. So I would definitely do some factoring first. And I'm going to try to factor both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator. Looks like we have an x plus 5, x plus 2 for our numerator, and x minus 5, x plus 2 for our denominator. So we do have some terms that could cancel, and our simplest form would then be that this would equal x plus 5 over x minus 5, and we need to keep in Keep in mind that x cannot be 5, and x can also not be negative 2 because of that term that we canceled out. So this is what the final answer would look like for that one. x plus 5 over x minus 5 with x not equal to 5 or negative 2. Multiplying, we can do some similar work as well, um, and we're going to multiply these just like you've multiplied numerical fractions for years and years. We multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. I like to um, try to factor as much as I can first and then do some simplifying if possible to make my life easier. So let's factor the numerator of the first fraction. That factors into, let's see, x plus 3, x minus 2. Is that right? Yep. And then x minus 5 down below. And then we have an x plus 5, x minus 5. That's an easy difference of two squares. And then the denominator of my second fraction is x plus 3, x plus 1. So let's cancel what we can. We have an x minus 5 up top and down below. We have an x plus 3 up top and down below. And then we'll just um, grab our terms that we need 
and write them in multiplied form here. X plus one. I think if your teacher doesn't specify, you don't need to um, multiply out the numerator here. You know, the FOIL process, you don't need to do that. I think it's easier to write it in factored form. But we do need to keep in mind that X can't be a five and X can't be a negative three. Okay, so that would be our solution right there. Dividing virtually the same, we just need to remember to invert that second fraction and then follow the multiplication process. So I'll do a couple steps here. I'll factor the first fraction. That's x plus 1, x plus 1. I'll invert the second fraction and factor. That's a difference of two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. Just to be clear, this turned into that. And then um, this is turning into that. So we're inverting that fraction and factoring at the same time x plus 5 and x minus 2. So let's see if we can do some fact, some canceling here. Okay, there's something interesting going on with the x minus 2. So I want you to look at this. And that's equivalent to negative 1 times x minus 2. Imagine if you were to distribute this negative 1, you would get a negative x plus a 2, which is a 2 minus x. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is actually rewrite this uh, expression in full without doing any canceling so you can see what I'm referring to here. I think a common mistake for a lot of these is to really try to do too much in your head to avoid having to write too much down. But I think it's really beneficial to write down as much as you can. So I'm going to cancel my x minus 2 terms. I'm going to cancel um, an x plus 1 term. And I think that's all the canceling I can do at this point. Um, another common mistake might be to think that this negative 1 times this x minus 1 might result in a cancellation with that term down there, but we would need a negative x down in the denominator um, in which we don't have. So um, let's write our, our final form now. So we have a negative 1 up top, we have an x minus 1 up top, and down below we have an x plus 1 and an x plus 5. That would be my final solution here. Just want to keep track that x cannot be negative 1 and x cannot be positive 2, negative 1, because of that term that we lost there, um, which honestly still exists, right, in our final simplified form. Um, 2, because of that form that we lost there, that term that we lost there. And then additionally, we still have a x plus 5 in our final, final answer, so x can additionally not be negative 5. So that would be my final answer for that one. All right, let's see. Oh, that's the end of that, of that sequence of problems. So uh, looks like we got through it. It wasn't too bad. That's a good place to stop.